What's up guys, Justin from Out of the Basement here to bring you a retro review of another Star Wars The Black Series 6 inch line figure. This time it is R2-D2, the astromech droid. It was first released in 2013 in the orange line and then during the 40th anniversary of Star Wars 1977 back in 2017, this was part of that 40th anniversary Kenner carded line. This is the R2-D2 that I have. I have the Kenner carded R2-D2. I knew I was going to take this one out of the packaging and then once I do take it out of those card backs, there's no point to keeping them in my personal opinion. So I do not have the box. Unfortunately, I just have the figure and the accessories. Speaking of the accessories, here they are. We have the Luke's lightsaber hilt from Return of the Jedi. We have two jetpack leg options, and then we have two standard leg options. We have the radar right here and the eye viewfinder piece thingy. Starting with the jetpack pieces, they're blue and gray plastic. And there is a little bit of silver right there on the blue, which looks really nice. I like the mix of blue, gray, and silver. Of course, R2-D2 uses his jetpack attachments in the prequels and then also plenty of times during the Clone Wars. So I think it's really neat that they added these. These are the standard leg options here. They just cover up the hole, you know, pegs right in and out, just like the jetpack ones. Blue, gray on the bottom. And, ooh, this one actually is blue on the bottom and this one's gray on the bottom. The pegs are gray. And then they're both, of course, blue with like silver pieces on the top. Very nice. We have the viewfinder. There is a square right here that you can tell is molded. I wish it would have been like orange or green or whatever color it turns in the films. But nonetheless, it's still neat that they included this. The main piece is gray right there, and then up here we have the actual viewfinder itself, which is white and then blue on the top. And then we have the radar thing that spins when, you know, R2 is scanning something. Again, the base piece here is gray plastic, and then it is black on the top, and then a little bit of silver. Very clean paint apps on this one, actually. And of course, we have Luke Skywalker's hilt from Return of the Jedi which is silver, main, mostly silver, black. We have a little red dot and a black dot right there. The switch is gold. Uh, we have a little bit more gold up here. This is a fantastic looking hilt. Uh, one thing to note is that you cannot use this as a replacement hilt. You could if you want to, I guess, but you cannot put the blade in. There is no peg hole for the blade uh, on that lightsaber hilt, but nonetheless, I love the sculpt work on this hilt. This is one of the best looking hilts in the Black Series, honestly. That's kind of odd that it's so good. I mean, with good reason. Just real quick, before we get into detail and all of that, I wanna show you both of these legs on the outside have two peg holes, two on each side. So for example, this is the jetpack piece, just pegs right in like this, maybe. Yes. And uh, super sturdy, you know, so now he's flying around. Great option, because I love the Clone Wars and he does that in Clone Wars, so, you know, I'm, I'm glad to have it, I'm glad to have it. And then this is the, just the regular arm or leg, limb option here. And it just pegs in the same exact way. Okay, so here is our two day tour. Our two fresh out of the package he looks awesome it's actually not fresh out of the package i've had him out of the package for a long time but he looks clean guys the paint apps are so clean on this figure let's uh let's start with the top here starting with the top and working our way down we have this beautiful chrome beautiful chrome for the dome of r2d2 there's plenty of great sculpt work there's just plenty of view i don't i don't want to call these eyeballs they're like viewfinders you know because he's he's not a real person but there is plenty of great sculpt work and paint 
on this figure. I absolutely love that chrome. It almost looks carbonized in a way. And I love the blue as well. It's just that perfect, like dark, almost kind of navy blue look. Love the red. Just look how clean that red is. There's like no splotching or anything. Again, with the green, no splotching whatsoever. Working our way towards the middle torso. We have more blue up here where all those things come out. You know how R2 goes crazy in Revenge of the Sith uh, to create a distraction. But I love the sculpt work and the mold uh, in the middle. And you could, even where it's not painted, because it doesn't need to be because that's not how it looks, you can tell there's still like that sculpt work on the body. And there's some wonderful chrome and blue. There's more chrome in here. This looks like a vent down here mixed with black. We have some blue. Ah, it's almost too small to tell. I believe this is blue, not black. And then we have more black right here. Black, blue, and chrome. Look how clean it is. And we have the side here. Going down on uh, the limb, the leg. We have more of that chrome up here near the top and also some sculpt work. There's less on the back because this is the back of the figure, but even down here, there's that same like vent looking thing where the chrome and the white and the blue just are so perfectly cleaned. I think I see one little blue dot right here that shouldn't be there, but it's on the back of the figure. Again, with this side, with the feet, there's even some dirt right here. And then with these wires right here, it's like this copper, you know, bronze paint for the wiring down there. There's a little more blue there. Love that little effect uh, for the dirtiness of the feet. Really awesome sculpt. Super clean paint, super clean. Uh, next up, I guess I'll show you the customizable aspects of this figure. There are three little tabs right here that you can pull all of them off and each one has a specific hole for a specific accessory same thing with these in terms of these blue tab pieces each one has a specific one to go back to they're not interchangeable so for example that's that one and then the last one is about that big so which ones go in which i'll show you I believe the radar piece goes in the back one, like so. So you, you could have, or I'm sorry, that's not the radar piece, that's the viewfinder. Like when he's underwater and you just see that eye pop up uh, so he knows where he's going. So that's what that is. That looks great. This is the radar piece, goes inside of this one right here, I believe, yep. So. In the show or the films, this would be spinning, you know, when he's scanning for life forms or scanning for whatever droids scan for in the Star Wars universe. Fits in there perfectly fine. It will come out like that. Let me see if the viewfinder would fall out. The viewfinder will not fall out. It's just that radar piece, well, maybe if you jam it in there good, it'll stay. So, you know, there's the radar piece. And then the hilt is actually difficult. That goes in the one near the front, you know, just like how in Return of the Jedi, when he fires the lightsaber hilt to Luke and it's revealed that he has a green lightsaber. So you can see this, like, it's a circle, but there's a little bit of a rectangle right there. And that's for the switch of the lightsaber. So you have to put it in there like that. So that will 100% take some work. It'll take some jamming in, but you can get it in there and it looks, you know, just like how it does. I don't know if it's supposed to go further in because I think that's how it works in the film, but I don't want to break anything and it, it will not go in any further. So I believe that's what you get out of it. Looks pretty neat. All right, so continuing with the customizable stuff, there are two more tabs, one on this side, one on that side that you can use a fingernail and it will unveil a, another little tool that R2 uses. This one, you just gotta use your nail in there to get that. This one is the thing that like plugs into a console on the wall and it twists and turns and gets information. You guys know what that is. Uh, it's gray plastic. The sculpt work is pretty decent, especially for just an added bonus that I did not originally know about. I think it's the coolest thing ever that this thing opens up and unveils one of these little 
tools that they use that he uses and the, it's gray plastic and a little tiny bit of like gold or dark yellow so that's like the console reader thing you could shut that back up and then this one also opens and I believe you just gotta use your nail here and get that out this one is like the taser you know when R2 hits the buzz droid center eye and that is gray plastic and it's like a greenish teal looking paint on there as well and I believe that is the taser so extra added points there is so much customization options for this figure and I'm not even done the head I'm not getting an art full articulation just yet but to get the third leg down you tw just twist the head and uh, that will come down. I guess we can take a look at the sculpt work on that as well. Not as much detail on that. It's basically just white plastic, but still a pretty cool option. That's another figure posing option for you right there. And there are little tiny wheels. They do roll, like at the end. Not that good, but you can still get that sliding motion, no problem, for the droid. If you do decide the, you want the three-legged option for posing, the head is pretty much, it does not go any further. So if he's going forward and you want to have the head looking like this way, you can't get it. It's way too tight and it will stop like I don't want to break it and jam it even further but this is the only head option for that third leg pose because if you try to go back and have it forward the leg moves up because that's how it goes up and down that is a bummer because this looks great it looks fantastic right but I do wish the head could face forward uh, in this pose. I think this is going to be a negative that I have about it. You know, I understand, like, I can't move it anymore or it'll probably break, but, you know, if you want him in that three legged pose, that is the head position that he's going to have. If you don't, then it doesn't matter. You can, oops, it'll start clicking once you go the wrong way as well to let you know not to go any further. But you can go whichever which way with the head, you know and you won't have to worry about that until you go too far and then it's down. In terms of articulation, I actually just showed you the articulation for the head. Swivels back and forth, and that is also how the leg comes down, of course. I already demonstrated that. The limbs here rotate all the way around, no matter how many times you go. It's never gonna get stiff or loose or anything. Completely around, that is for both limbs. I don't know what to call these. Are they feet, limbs, hands, arms, legs? What are they? The feet, I am going to call these feet. They go that far and that far. They just kind of swivel back and forth like that. That's the motion that you're going to get out of it. And then in terms of the customizable stuff, I already showed you that. Uh, same thing with the third limb, foot. You know, it just moves back and forth like that. Altogether, with a review in terms of articulation, detail, and paint, this is an amazing figure. There are so many customizable elements to this figure. You have three different options up here. You have these two tools. You have the third leg or the two-legged option. There's just so much customization with how you could pose this R2 figure. The only big negative I have right now which is not that big of a deal to me, but we try to be unbiased uh, here on the channel. So I will say that the fact that if you want the three legs down and, you know, the wheeling motion look to R2, the head will be stuck like that on the side. That's going to be my only negative so far for this figure. However, channel mate Nate claims that this figure is too small so let's do some comparisons and find out what better way to determine if it's the correct scale than comparing it to good old c-3po you know they're always together in the films and i gotta say 
com just comparing these two, it looks right to me. Maybe a tad too small. I can see what he's saying. I can definitely see what he's saying. I I think in the Clone Wars, he looks smaller, but in the original trilogy, he's kind of like a bulking, you know, tin can, basically, because there is an actor inside of it. So it had to be big enough for that. Rest in peace, Kenny Baker. In Clone Wars, he does look a little more slim, and you gotta remember, like, he gets stuck in the back of, like, ships, like X-Wings and stuff like that throughout the duration of the franchise. So I don't know. I just don't know. Let's make a few more comparisons. Here he is next to R5-D4. Here he is next to a Imperial Stormtrooper. Here he is next to Luke Skywalker. And I gotta say, next to Luke, he looks in scale, but Luke is also, you know, a shorter actor. Mark Hamill was a shorter actor than a lot of the other actors. You know, everybody remembers that line. Aren't you a little short to be a Stormtrooper? So I think Luke is meant to be short. Here he is next to that Imperial astromech droid that came in that one four pack here he is next to a jawa i just don't know i i will say this it's not small enough for me to say oh my gosh that's way too small it might be a tad bit small i don't know if it's the height or just the overall bulkiness it's not that bulky but it might be a tad too small it might be it's definitely not too small it might be a tad bit small but it's it's not too small it's not enough to where i would just be like shocked and appalled at the size of this figure i think it looks good next to almost all of the other black series six inch figures so my final verdict is gonna be i understand if someone thinks that is too small however i still think it fits in with the rest of the black series just fine it makes up for it 10 times over with the very, very clean paint apps and detail and all of the different accessories that this comes with and all the different customizable options that you get with this figure. For people who don't have it, I'm sorry. You know, it's been released twice and it's still super hard to get. I do hope this gets released again uh, later on in the line, whether that be an archive wave or maybe the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. That's my phone. But I definitely recommend it. I wish more Black Series figures that are small like this would come with the amount of accessories that this R2 does. Now I'm looking at eBay right now. I'm seeing listings for $50 for the Orange Line one, which isn't that bad. The, the Orange Line and the 40th anniversary are not uh, different in any way. It's just the packaging. But I would... I would wait. I would. I don't know if I would go insane eBay or Amazon prices for R2. He's essential. He's absolutely essential, but he's been released twice, and Hasbro is showing us that they're pretty good at re-releasing old and rare figures, so I wouldn't get too desperate. And of course, there is going to be that Empire Strikes Back 40th Anniversary R2. It's going to be the dirty, grimier Dagobah R2 but I'm sure it's gonna be a banger just like this one is. So if you guys don't have an R2, I would say wait for that 40th anniversary Empire Strikes Back one, and I would not pay the whatever eBay, Amazon, crazy, stupid prices for a modern action figure. Uh, me personally, I wouldn't pay over probably $35 for any single release of a Black Series figure, as long as it's not like a deluxe figure, which this was not. But anyway, guys, this was my review. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Like I said, I've been Justin from Out of the Basement, and we will see you guys in the next review or video.